All right, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to uh, another fine Tuesday on this October 24th, 2023 date. It's about 11.57 a.m. here, California time. Latest activity shows a 1.7. And um, let's see, what do we got going on here over the last 24 hours as far as larger scale movement goes? I uh, did see some further activity over here in eastern Australia. Looks like a 4.0 coming into this region. USGS not really picking up on it too much. Uh, but that is being reported by the EMSC data. So let's go ahead and go check that out here real quick and see what we got. By the way, live stream is back up and running. Uh, it went down in the middle of the night last night. I forgot to turn off the automatic updates uh, as far as the Windows system goes. So that uh, reset by itself, even when I was streaming. So either way, it's back up and running. There is that uh, four-pointer there south of New, uh, New South Wales area of Australia. We have seen a, a pretty good amount of earthquake activity here uh, in terms of uh, background activity. This is uh, somewhat above for the Australia area. Uh, we, of course, we've seen that movement down here outside of the uh, Melbourne area uh, earlier this week. Um, actually, over the weekend, I believe. Or was this yesterday? One of the two. There's been a, a handful of uh, aftershocks in this area as well. Um, following that movement in Australia, but typically we don't see a whole lot of earthquake activity here across the Australia region. So it looks like things have been picking up here in the past few days. Uh, that's generally a good sign of some stress building amongst the plate itself. That's going to be the Australia plate. Uh, when this moves, mainly we've got to watch these areas here across the plate boundary of uh, around New Zealand area. And we really haven't seen any large-scale adjustment. We've seen a handful of earthquakes there in the New Zealand region. Let me go over here and uh, show you guys real quick. Uh, this is the past, uh, well, this is the most recent activity. Let me double check, make sure. Four hours ago, 2.1. Uh, a couple other smaller quakes here. It looks like that's centered around the Taupo Super Volcano, North Island area. But uh, we did see some threes here in the past couple days, even a four-pointer and uh, even a 5.2 there a couple days ago, South Island area. So things are slightly kicking up here across the region, uh, but not a whole lot here across the area of the South Island, the Alpine Fault here, the plate boundary itself. Got to watch this region. As we're seeing, uh, you know, a whole lot of movement here take place uh, in the divergent boundary zones. Let me bring up the last 30 days of magnitudes here. We've seen quite a bit of activity here in the divergent boundary a fracture zone out here, right? South of Australia, we've seen an uh, uh, uptick going on through the Australia area, as far as earthquake activity goes. And all around this plate boundary here, northern end, uh, even some movement here south of Australia. But this area is lacking here any uh, larger scale movement. And I expect that to uh, fill in just a matter of time, I suppose. These little earthquakes, though, given a good indicator that, that this region is strained. Uh, as far as the plate dynamics go. So we continue to watch the New Zealand area. Uh, there's one earthquake being reported from USGS yesterday. That's a 4.1 in the Cook Strait area of New Zealand, uh, outside of Wellington. Uh, a little bit of movement overnight north here into, well, this is from, uh, all of these are from yesterday, it looks like, as far as these earthquakes upstream up towards the Fiji area. I don't think we see anything newer kicking off here. So this is a, uh, this is our quiet zone here today, it looks like. It won't stay quiet for long. Most of the activity been um, centered right around the Indonesia Islands area and south of the Philippines around the Banda Sea, where we're seeing quite a few threes and twos and some fours in there as well. We did see a little bit of movement here into the northern end of the Kuril Kamachaka. Let's go ahead and take a look up here. Uh, this area definitely primed for a larger scale event, I, I believe. Uh, that's the subduction zone that sits right here. Pretty lengthy. 4.8 earlier this morning. Uh, northern edge here, again, off the coast of Russia into the Kurokamachaka Trench, although pretty shallow, about 10 kilometers deep for that earthquake. Also did see some uh, deeper scale movement earthquake here uh, activity yesterday. 103 kilometers for that 4.2. Uh, one more deep earthquake here outside of Tokyo, but well underneath this area. 166 kilometers for that 4.5. So a little slight adjustment going on here. We'll continue to watch the Kuril Kamchaka for some larger scale movement. This activity off the coast of Taiwan is from yesterday. 
As uh, far as newer activity goes here today, we did see China moving up here slightly. Uh, relatively speaking, this has been somewhat active here across the general area, indicating stress amongst the plate boundary here around the Himalayas. Uh, let's see, a couple fours, uh, but this 5.4 strike in this morning, it looks like early this morning, local time here, 4.30 in the morning. And a little bit of further activity here across Iran and Turkey. Iran seeing this earthquake today, a 4.4, uh, just off the plate boundary here. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. South America region, seeing a handful of earthquakes, a little mixed bag of yesterday and today. The latest one, 4.1, pretty deep underneath the Argentina region, 162 kilometers deep. And off the coast of Panama, we're seeing a little bit of movement here across the the boundary of the uh, Cocos Plate and the uh, Nazca Plate here. Kind of in line there almost with the uh, Caribbean Plate as well. So a little bit of movement stirring up here uh, this morning. Caribbean uh, Plate, the rest of the area. And the Puerto Rico Trench seeing a handful of earthquakes as well. Pretty deep earthquake just after 1 o'clock in the morning here outside of the U.S. Virgin Islands region. 4.0, 116 kilometers deep here. Quite a few uh, subduction zones and troughs all over the place here make this a very dangerous area in terms of the earthquake potential. Out in the eastern portion of the states here, we do have a, a few earthquakes shown up on the map. A couple out in Texas, some in uh, Oklahoma. Got a 2.2 in the area of Missouri. That's on the uh, New Madrid Seismic Zone. Nothing big for now. Uh, there's one little earthquake out here in the... Uh, the uh, mountain range here, the Shenandoah Mountains, close to that area in Virginia, 2.2 from yesterday. Uh, overnight, um, let's see, got a little bit of activity stirring up in Idaho. Now, if you watch my update last night, we seen a little earthquake come into the seismograph stations. Uh, that's going to be this one right here. And uh, they didn't put, they didn't post it up on their USGS site last night, but it looks like they have this morning. Uh, and that was just a 2.2. I it said it was close to a 2.5 due to the fact that it showed up here across numerous seismograph stations. So I was pretty uh, spot on with that uh, guesstimate there on that magnitude. Uh, but not a whole lot of activity since then, as far as earthquake activity goes at the Yellowstone area. Uh, over in Idaho, a little uptick here across eastern Idaho, up against the mountain range. And uh, up here in the uh, Cascadia subduction zone, well, this is going to be... And more closer to the uh, Juan de Fuca plate and the Pacific plate boundary. That's going to be the plate boundary right here. If you want to be specific, this is going to be the Explorer plate. Um, the Juan de Fuca plate here in the middle. And the uh, Gorda plate down south here. Three small microplates, but most people just call this region the Juan de Fuca plate. A little bit of activity stirring up there late last night with a 4.5. Uh, into the Washington area, one earthquake outside of the Mount Rainier region. This is going to be a little 2.4, 15 kilometers deep, not associated with the volcano there. Mount St. Helens still continues to see a little earthquake activity, uh, including one today, a little 0.4. Been an ongoing swarm of activity there across Mount St. Helens. Uh, 1.4 here in Oregon. That looks like it's in the uh, valley area here of Oregon. Not a whole lot going on through the Cascades there now. Uh, a little bit of activity stirring up yesterday around the Lake Almanor area. Uh, but aside from that, Northern California specifically is pretty quiet. The Bay Area here seeing a little bit of activity in the last hour, it looks like, near Berkeley. A highly populated region on a highly dangerous fault zone known as the Hayward Fault. This is definitely uh, capable of producing uh, some sizable earthquakes there in the low 7 magnitude range. It's been a little while. And uh, I think this one is one of the faults here across the Bay Area that's uh, got a high percentage of seeing a large damaging earthquake here in the, in the soon to be, uh, in the near future, I should say. Right now, we just got a 2.6 and a 1.7 occurring within the last hour. Continue to watch that, though. Uh, the rest of California, a little spotty as we get down into Southern California here. Not a whole lot going on. The southern branch of the San Andreas Fault continues to sleep. But also at the continue at the same time continues to constrain here and uh, no doubt will be responsible for producing an 8.1 magnitude earthquake one of these days. Uh, Imperial Fault, 
Well, a little bit of movement looks like south and north of the border here. Nothing big going on, just a little slight activity. Uh, Alaska, typical movement up there. Not seen anything out of the ordinary. This is all just general microquake movement up there outside of Anchorage and uh, around the Denali area. Hawaii's been rocking and rolling here. Near the Pahala area, most of the movement has been uh, situated here across the Pahala area. It's fairly deep as well, about 30 kilometers or so. Now, the Kilauea Volcano, well, this is another story. It keeps coming and going. Last night, we seen a pretty large drop-off in the inflation data there across the summit area of Kilauea Volcano. So, let's go ahead and check it out this morning, see what we got here. Uh, well, I guess it's this afternoon, not really the morning time. Let's see what, what we got here for the tilt meters uh, as far as inflation goes. There's our drop-off from last night. It has continued to drop off very nicely here over the past 12, uh, 13, 14 hours or so. And I think we are still, though, we're still kind of up there in terms of inflation. This is a long-term graph since about uh, the 25th of last month. So about 30 days here of data still shows inflation with periods of deflation. Right now, we're currently experiencing a deflation event. Now, whether this drops below the previous deflation events or not will remain to be seen throughout the day and evening. Uh, but more than likely, it's just going to be a uh, pattern here where we dip down a little bit and probably rise back up. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that. Earthquake activity has been relatively calm across the area of Kilauea Volcano um, compared to when we're on the uptick when, in terms of inflation. Right now, it's just a, a handful of earthquakes from yesterday and today. So continue to watch that and see how it plays out. Uh, space weather activity here. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Covering a little bit here from the B-flare category. Past couple days has been nothing but very minimal conditions across the sun. Looks like we do have a little bit of low-grade C-flare activity, but I guarantee that's nothing really to chat about. 20% chance for a C-flare. M-flare and everything else is below 1%. This is very odd to see during a solar maximum. It uh, doesn't look like there's a whole lot coming around the bend in terms of new sunspots. Not a whole lot developing on the Earth-facing side either. Uh, we'll just continue to watch this and see how it plays out. We do have a couple coronal holes that are venturing center disk and will be uh, facing Earth here in the coming days. This could provide a little bit of enhancement to the three-day geomagnetic forecast, which right now looks pretty green, which means not a whole lot of greenery up there in the sky far as the aurora potential goes. Uh, but we'll watch this for some change here, uh, following probably after the 26th or so, once we get this area facing us, and uh, we'll get a little perspective of how much solar wind stream has flown out of these uh, coronal holes. All right, Storm Prediction Center here today. Not a whole lot of severe weather. We do have a marginal risk for some severe weather. Uh, that includes a little 2% down here in western Texas with some hail. Not a whole lot going on. Hope everyone has a good day. Please stay safe out there. And we will chat you guys back here a little bit later on this evening uh, for the uh, Tuesday night update. Take care, folks.